Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. Professor Porter, with his party searching the African jungle for his daughter, have imposed themselves as medicine men upon a cannibal tribe, but are virtually prisoners. Jane Porter, rescued from the jungle's perils by Tarzan, believes her father to be at the cannibal kraal. She induces Tarzan to take her with him upon one of his forays to the kraal in search of arrows. Suddenly the blacks swarm upon them and overpower them. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. column of flame-licked smoke rises from the sacrificial fire. The circling, chanting natives, fearsome in their tribal ornaments, loom black and grotesque against the ruddy glow. Their frenzied howling has given way to a rhythmic chanting. For now, the white devil god, as they call Tarzan, lies bound and helpless, and with him the white memsam. In a short time, a very short time, when the moon is full, the white devil god will lie on the hot stones. The rain god will approve, and the terrible drought will end. The cadence of the drums rises and falls. The blacks circle faster and faster. In the hut where they have been thrown, Jane and Tarzan lie listening. Well, White Skin, as Bethel would say, it was a good fight while it lasted. Jane hurt? I really don't know, White Skin. I can't move, and I'm one big ape from head to toe. But I don't believe there are any bones broken. White Skin hurt? No. A little more rope break. White Skin break, Jane rope. White Skin, Jane, go quick. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way, White Skin. I don't think we will get out. And strange as it may be, I'm almost reconciled. I expect to be killed, and that's all there is to it. No, no. Jane, no kill. White Skin break rope. Quick, White Skin, Jane, go away. Black man, no kill quick. Little kill. Little kill. Many little kill. Then big kill. Oh, I suppose you mean torture. A little at a time before they kill. Yes, that's what worries me. I'm like Daddy now. I don't mind being killed, but I have a horror of being tortured. Tarzan strains at the ropes binding him. This time the blacks have not used his own grass rope, and the ape man feels sure that when he can exert the necessary power often enough, the ropes will part. He relaxes. Slides himself on the ground, trying to work the now loosened ropes to a position where his muscles can exert more pressure. I, I can't see you, White Skin. What are you doing? A little more rope break. Oh, I wish I had your courage, your determination, but I haven't. I suppose I never should have come along in the first place, but, well, oh, I couldn't let Father start off on a trip like this alone. Father? Yes, White Skin. You don't know what I'm talking about, of course, but it does me good to rattle on like this, so I won't have to think. How are you getting along? A little time, a little more. Tarzan's corded arm muscles swell to their fullest as he exerts his utmost strength against the fibers. The straining ropes give, loosen. Tarzan relaxes, lies quietly a moment, then renews his attack upon his bond. Oh, I think you're wasting your time, White Skin. I'm tied up so tightly, hand and foot, that I can't even budge a strand of these ropes. Shh! What is it, White Skin? Go, Mangani, come. Jane, no talk. The witch doctor enters the hut bends down and covers Jane's face with a piece of matting. That's Angle. What about that? At the witch doctor's orders, the two blacks take Jane from the ground and carry her out. Tarzan lies motionless. If they'd only been a few minutes later, he would have been free. The blacks leave and carry Jane to a hut closer to the sacrificial altar. Meanwhile, Professor Porter, Clayton, Darno, and Philander are in their hut discussing the situation. <laughs> move around without that confounded witch doctor following us. We might find out where Jane is held. She is certainly in one of these huts. Uh, yes, Clayton. Although we have established ourselves as powerful medicine men, we apparently have no more freedom than when we were captive. May, that is just it, monsieur. We have not convinced the chief in spite of all our magic. He regards us only as human beings, although superior ones. While we are in no immediate danger of the cooking pot, 
the situation is vastly different in regards to Jane and, and shall I say, Tarzan of the Apes. Uh, yes, yes, Philander. We stand and talk when I feel that we should be doing something, anything. But, Monsieur le Professeur, it is wiser, is it not, to await the arrival of Nakido? I'm not so sure, Donna. Are you certain that Nakido can be trusted? If we do not trust Nakido, Monsieur, what shall we do? Start a search of the hut? I know. Of course, we know that's impossible. We can't even move outside this one without an escort of blacks following us. Exactly, mon monsieur. And it is possible that Nakido knows where Mademoiselle Jane is. Quiet. I hear someone coming. Shh. Perhaps Nakido. The witch doctor. Kako, Kilindi, Masai, no now. He says that the white devil god is to be sacrificed tonight. I told him that the rain god will not send rain if he performs the sacrifice, that we must perform the rite. Uh, Jane, wh- what did he say of Jane? Nothing? Memzab, Manaba, Shanari. He says that, that, well, that Mademoiselle Jane killed his people and must die, but that we shall decide the manner. Oh, but, good heavens, tell no, Jane... Sacrifice? Of course not, monsieur. We shall not allow the witch doctor. This idea of his allowing us to decide the manner of Mademoiselle Jane's death is only an effort on his part to convince the chief that we are faking. Then what are you going to do? Does anyone among you suggest anything? I admit that I can't. All right, right, Arno. If we, monsieur, I shall make a suggestion. The witch doctor has put it fairly up to us. Very well. We shall apparently fall in with his plan. But you can't mean go ahead with the sacrifice. To all outward appearances, yes. Oh, I'm afraid, very much afraid, that the witch doctor will see through your scheme, Donald. Well, I expect him to. But we must devise a plan whereby even if the witch doctor does know that we intend saving Mademoiselle Jane, we can surprise him by the method and effect her escape. One thing, Donald. Remember, we do not know where Jane is. Therefore, we cannot let her know what our plan is. I have thought of that. We shall tell the witch doctor to bring Mademoiselle Jane here, or lead us to her, and under the guise of performing the ceremony, convey our plan to her. Hmm. It might work. Uh, it sounds like a slim hope, down oh. At any rate, let's have the witch doctor in and try it. And remember, no matter what Mademoiselle Potter says, pretend to ignore her as long as the witch doctor is present. I shall go and get him now. Good luck, old man. Uh, the best one, sir. And now, Professor, we must think of something to do. Some sort of, well, anything that will give us a chance to get Jane where we can defend her if it does come to a fight. Uh, do you suppose that if we were to turn a half a dozen of those rockets through... Oh, I'm afraid not, Professor. There are too many natives here now. And in any case, the gate of the stockade is too far removed from the fire. And that gate is closed. And before we can open it... It would all be over. Yes, yes, of course. I know I'm acting like, like a drowning man clutching at straws. Oh, that's that, Professor. You're no worse off than the rest of us. At least, that was a suggestion. Ah, yes, Jarno. Uh, the witch doctor says he will bring Mademoiselle Jane to this hut. Good. But his manner suggests that he is suspicious of our intention. Even if he is, it'll be oh, oh, I can hardly wait to see Jane. Even if, even if it's all over. Till the next you In the other hut, Tarzan writhes and struggles. Now the ropes are loose. He tries to work them into the right position. He strains and tenses. There's a snap. A strand gives way. Another snap. His right arm is free. He pulls the rope from him. He's on his feet. The ape man takes the longest piece of rope, loops it about his arm, and goes silently to the opening of the hut. The black, watching outside, stoops to listen. He sees Tarzan, opens his mouth to yell, but Tarzan's fist shoots out, catches the black full in the chin. Without a sound, the warrior crumples to the ground. Tarzan makes his way to the witch doctor's sanctuary. He goes inside. Ah, his knife, lying on a leopard skin. He takes the knife, creeps to the door. There. He sees the witch doctor going to the hut, where Jane lies bound and gagged. Like some unshriven thing, the misshapen monster bends down and enters the hut. Tarzan stands motionless. The witch doctor emerges, carrying Jane in his arms. The ape man, crouching, moves swiftly in pursuit through the shadows between the huts. The rope is at his side. The witch doctor, unconscious of danger, continues on his way. Tarzan is almost upon him. He swings his rope. Whips it about the black's neck, twists and tightens it. The witch doctor hurls Jane to the ground as he throws his arms up to the strangling rope about his neck. A quick jerk on the rope, and Tarzan pulls the loathsome beast to the ground. Now, the 
The ape man lifts Jane into his arms. A quick glance shows him the way is clear to the trees overhanging the palisade. The witch doctor gets the rope free from his throat and struggles to his feet. The natives circling the fire stop at the witch doctor's cry. All the natives rush toward the hut. Professor Porter, Clayton, Darno, and Philander fling themselves out into the open. Nay, what? What is it? Can you see? I, I, I don't know. But the natives are all coming this way. Look! There! At the edge of the compound! It's, it's Tarzan of the Apes! Can Tarzan possibly escape the maddened savages with Jane Porter? This is...